Hello, this is Chloe here at Inner Whispers. Today I'm going to be doing a video review of the Mart Tarot by Julie Kutcher Watts. The deck comes in a nice stable little box and as you can see it's quite a large size and quite fairly square. There's also a very detailed book, hardback, which has an awful lot of information in it. It's beautifully presented, giving scans of the cards and additional little pictures, and gives lots of mythology and history. I like the fact that the script looks like illuminated manuscripts of old, and that there are additional details and images. It also gives information about the astrological system which Julie uses for this deck based on the lunar calendar, which I believe she also uses for her Journey into Egypt tarot, which is due to be released next year. So, moving on to the cards. There are one or two cards that I'm not quite sure about. For example, the Emperor seems to me to be rather High Priestess-like with this crescent moon. However, she does have an eagle on her shield, which is very emblematic of the Empress and, of course, the Emperor. The Death card is rather shamanic-looking. And the Magician is one that has raised quite a few questions because obviously here we have a female, she doesn't have all the elements of the suits around her. However, she is bringing into the world a new baby. And I don't know if you can see, but there's this symbol here, similar to a lemniscate. This shape is actually called an analemma, and it's the pattern which the sun describes. So if you take a photograph of the sun from the same position at the same time of day over the course of a year, this is the pattern that you will get. The Devil card likewise has raised quite a few questions. However, I really like it because it's a feminist commentary, bringing into question the idea that childbirth is something dirty or that women have been condemned to, as is written in the Bible. Another reason for this very different choice of image for the Devil card is because of the way that Julie positions this at the winter solstice, or Yule, and so this card shows the birth or rebirth of the sun. And the position of the sun, the phases of the moon, are very important in quite a number of cards. Here we have the analemma again, and likewise in the two of coins. Another rather non-traditional aspect of this deck is to be found in the court cards. For example, the Princess of Wands is a prepubescent girl, giving a sense of potential and possibility, and she's also got plenty of attitude. The later princesses are fairly young, showing that aspect of youthfulness associated also with the pages. Except when we come to the Princess of Coins, traditionally the Page of Pentacles, and this shows an older woman, earthy and abundant. The Page of Pentacles certainly has that aspect of being fairly serious, an old soul. Likewise, the Prince of Wands is a baby reaching up from his crib, trying to grasp the world, which certainly represents the enthusiastic aspect of the Prince of Wands. The Prince of Cups is a knight in shining armour, but what you see when you look at him is your own reflection. He doesn't show any of his emotions. The Prince of Swords is quite harsh, angry, violent, and the Prince of Coins is far more mellow. Likewise, the Queens are a little unusual, though with the occasional nod for example, to the traditional idea of the Queen of Swords being a widow. But always staying true to their suit. The 
the King of Wands shows an inquiring mind and the virility aspect of this card is shown in the picture behind him and in the book that he reads. A Dionysian or Bacchanalian King of Cups And in the King of Pentacles, we see Osiris having been trapped in a coffin by his brother Set and before he is refound by Isis. As you can see, the card images here are very rich with plenty of symbolism, vibrant colours, and a wealth of associations, both mythological and historical from cultures all around the world, a variety of ethnicities and a depth of imagery that's really quite stunning. I especially like for example the Four of Coins which is a very positive take on this card. Here we see people husbanding their resources rather than being miserly. In the Three of Swords we have the Dove of Peace pierced by swords representing the three major religions of the world. I adore the Eight of Cups where a woman walks towards the bright light of the sun. And an interesting Nine of Wands based on the biblical story where there is that aspect of protecting as a woman places a baby in a basket to float down the river to protect him from those who would harm him because of his birth. I absolutely adore this two of wands with the little dove in a heart at the top and this gateway to a magical kingdom. The two of swords is a very interesting card in the golden scissors we see a phoenix rising from the ashes and in the background there are caribou. These images of an old woman and a wolf represent an Inuit mythological tale that speaks of discernment, of culling the caribou herd in order for them to grow stronger and to protect the tribe and their resources. In the Eight of Wands, the emphasis is on the idea of a message, not only in the woman writing with a quill pen at the front, but also in the picture that is behind her, which is called quite simply the letter. In the Sun card, we see the start of new life. And the Four of Cups hearkens to the saga of Arthur, which is something which has long interested Julie. The whole of her suit of cups in her first tarot, The Ancestral Path, was devoted to the Arthurian saga. I also really like the Five of Coins, where the aspect of supplication to a higher power in times of hardship is more apparent than in some other decks. I also really like the Nine of Cups, where the wish card is far more clearly, be careful what you wish for. And the Eight of Swords speaks to the amazing size of the universe and how the ideas that are inculcated into us by our culture can stop us from seeing what is all around us. In the Five of Wands, an older man teaches a young boy to play chess perhaps hoping, as well as fearing, that one day his pupil will outstrip him. And I love this depiction of the eponymous Mart, laughing at life, at the quirks of karma. As I say, there's a great depth to this deck. A lot of very beautiful images, covering a lot of different cultures from Native American to more modern times, from Renaissance to the frontier, 
outdoors and in the halls of academia there's a great deal of astrology in this deck as well as mythology and history I love the Gaia card and the Ides of March this deck can for the most part be read quite easily from a rider weight basis but it offers a lot of new quirks and twists to the cards a lot of depth and always beauty I love the fact that the cards are borderless and quite big so that you can really see the beauty of the images the backs are non-reversible And this is a wonderful deck, not only for a collection, but also for reading with. I hope you found this review interesting, and that you'll come back again soon. In the meantime, please listen to your own Inner Whispers.